We shifted our preparation over today, obviously, in Philadelphia. We're full speed on Philly. Today will actually be a walkthrough practice. We're going to take the time today to kind of get our guys moving on a lot of the install that apply early downs and get into some third down stuff, get us to jump on that, and tomorrow we'll be on the field full speed and have a normal Friday. That's the plan for the week. Uh, you know, obviously dealing with Philadelphia is a division opponent, so there's a, uh, there's a rivalry aspect to this. You know, you can take the records out of it. That's really irrelevant at this point. All that matters is, you know, competing against Philadelphia and playing our best game on the field. You know, I'd say in relation to the last game, to us it's really irrelevant, the result of anything that happened last game. Uh, all that matters is we learn from our experiences on the field and that we play a better game and a complete game as a team. But this is a, a different team. This is an improved team. They got a lot of their guys back off of injury. They're an explosive offense. It's one of the top defenses in the league. And obviously Dave Fipp does a tremendous job on special teams. So we have a lot of respect for this opponent. Uh, we got to have a good week of preparation. And we got to go make sure we execute on the field on Sunday for 60 minutes. That being said, I'll open up to any questions you have. Lester. Oh, hi. Les Bowen from the Philly Inquirer. Uh, Joe, you, while the result of the last game might be irrelevant, uh, what did you learn from that? Uh, Doug Peterson noted uh, in his press conference today that you basically had him beat with five minutes left in the game. Uh, what do you think you need to do to, to get that to the finish line this time? Well, the part that he referenced was last five minutes the most important part in that game. We, we've got to finish as a team and play a complete team. You can't fall asleep on Philly. They're an explosive team. They do a great job in situations. We already knew this team's a very good team on third down in the red area in two-minute drives. They do a great job in terms of scheming you up in a game plan element. You know, Doug does a great job in terms of starting the game out fast, creating explosive plays, and really finding things that you've struggled with and looking to expose them. So, you know, look, we, we've known this opponent for an amount of time. You know, it really just confirms what you know about them already, about how dangerous they are and how they can score at any point in time. And you've got to really play a complete game to finish. You've got to win up front with your offensive line and your defensive line. This team can run the ball very well. They can get after your passer and stop your run game with negative plays as well. So you've got to play good up front on both sides of the ball. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Joe. Uh, with Evan, how much of an asset is it with him that you can play 12 personnel but – Give it so many different looks because you can line him up so many different spots. Yeah, I think just because of his athletic ability actually creates. You can be in, you know, 12 personnel really is kind of like 11. You can be in 11 is kind of like 10 personnel. You can do a lot of different things with Evan. He's a guy that we've obviously used in some different roles throughout this season. Jason's done a good job of moving him around as a chess piece, playing him some in the backfield, flexing him out wide like a receiver, and then playing him attached as a tight end. So, you know, have a guy like that on the field that you can do a lot of different things with. Really kind of presents some issues to the, the other team at times. The biggest thing is really identify how they're going to play you within that game in your personnel sets. How are they treating Evan, you know, on a game-by-game -game basis? And that may change based on down and distance. You know, first and 10, if it's 12 personnel, you may see a lot of nickel defense right there, treating him more as a receiver. Whereas when it's third and short, you may see more base defense at times if it's 12 personnel to stop some kind of run game. So it all depends on who the opponent is and how they're matching up. But he's definitely a guy that has a lot of versatility. Nice show. All right. Hey, Joe. Uh what is having Logan and Jabril uh, essentially playing the same position but not necessarily playing similar roles do for your defense and kind of add to that versatility that you guys like, especially on the back end? Yeah, I think both guys you know, really have different skill sets but similar at the same time, if that makes any sense. Uh, their ability to really play different spots gives Pat a lot of flexibility and freedom in how he calls the defense but then also how he designs it and adjusts it within the game. And I think that's probably one of the biggest strengths right now for us defensively is between Pep and Logan, we can make a lot of adjustments within the game because both guys are highly intelligent. Both guys really see it conceptually and know the game. And within a game, if they're getting a tendency on us, we can flip them in terms of responsibility or we could adjust something based on what they're doing game plan wise that really helps us out. But both guys have been, you know, Pep has really improved this season in terms of playing a deep part of the field. He's really been an asset back there. You know, he's always been out playing the box. Logan's a guy that's had a lot of flexibility, whether it's playing that, you know, nickel position right there in the slot, whether it's playing, you know, free safety roll or more that strong safety roll down the box. He's a good tackler. He's a savvy player. He's got good vision inside. So both those guys give us a lot of flexibility. Um, I would imagine you would agree that the best quarterbacks can be cautious and aggressive, really, at the same time. Uh, where is Daniel on that, <clears throat> excuse me, on that spectrum? Because you want him to be cautious and, and be careful with the ball, but... He's not making enough plays really offensively, aggressive-wise. So where is he there? Yeah, I would disagree with that, Paul. I think he's doing a lot of things aggressively. I think the way this guy stands in a pocket when the rush is collapsing on him at certain times or makes plays with his feet extended outside the pocket, 
the way he's willing to pull the ball in some of his own reads and run downfield and take a big hit. I see a lot of aggressiveness in Daniel, and I like the way he plays. I know the team rallies around him right there. Um, you know, when it comes time to take our shots, we'll take our shots offensively, and sometimes we got to be a little more calculated about how we want to systematically move the ball down the field. You have to have a good balance of both within the game plan. You know, that being said, look, I think Daniel's a developing player. I think he's showing a lot of promise. He's making a lot of gains this year. He's done a lot of really, really good things for us that have given us a chance to be competitive within games. And I see him improving on a weekly basis. And I love having that guy in the huddle right now being our signal caller. I know the team around him does as well. Okay, if you don't like the word aggressive, um, do you see any tentativeness in, in him at all when he's processing things in his mind that I don't want to make a mistake? No, not at all. Not at all. And I think he's really done a good job of, you know, sitting back and dissecting the defense at times this year and finding the right receiver. And at the same time, when we go ahead and we put scheme type plays out there to isolate a certain player, he's done a good job as far as getting the ball distributed to those guys and make sure he gives them a chance to make a play with the ball in their hands. Thanks. All right. Joe, I know uh, their personnel has changed a lot since the last time you played them. Uh, but in terms of your team, do you feel like you're you're a different team than than you were just a short couple of weeks ago when when you played this the, these guys? I feel we're getting closer and closer to what we want to be as a team, Tom. And I think we're improving every week, and I see that, and the players see that on the tape when we turn it on. There, uh, we want our identity to be something that jumps off the tape at us when you watch it. There doesn't need to be volume on the tape for a reason. That's because all you have to know is what you see. So we turn the tape on, our players see it, they understand what they're doing, what they're improving on. We're also very transparent and very blunt about what we have to correct and make sure we get better on a weekly basis. But look, we, we've sliced up every which way possible for our players to show them you know, what we're doing well, what we have to improve on. Um, do I think we're a different team? I think we're an improving team. You know, I think we're an improving team. And I see strides made with all the players on a weekly basis. I'm very pleased with the way they come to work, you know, how they've already started off today and get on the field and then we'll make strides today going forward. And then is it fair to assume that since they weren't um... – uh, designated to return that O'Shane and uh, McKinney are going to be on the other side of the bye? So we're kind of milking that a little bit right now, Tom, for it being a walkthrough today. We'll actually take a look at these guys, you know, with the trainers today and see how much strides they've made and if we think it's realistic to get them in the game this week. Because it's, you know, you get that 21-day window right there, Tom, to return. There's really no advantage of just pushing them back that day early to get them into a walkthrough when essentially they could get what they need in the meeting anyway. Zach? Hey, Joe. Um, with... with with Austin Mack, um, I, I've noticed that he's like not afraid to get into it with cornerbacks. Like if they start shoving him, he, he doesn't back down. He's willing to get in there and block. Like how, how much have you, is that something that like stood out to you when during training camp when you obviously didn't have preseason games to evaluate him? Like was that toughness and willingness to not like really back down from anything? Is that something that caught your eye? Yeah, absolutely. He's definitely a scrappy dude. You know, I think you know one thing about Austin. I, I've kind of told him this directly. I mean, I say, look, man, you're just kind of guy that hangs around a lot and you make plays and you do things. You block for us. You're gonna make tough catches. You're going to help us in the kicking game at different times. Um, he just keeps showing up. You know, he's a guy that at times he may not flash all the time, that does something kind of, you know, that just jumps out at you. But he just keeps making play after play after play, and he shows up on a regular basis. Look, for a young player, this guy's, you know, he's a smart player. He's an instinctive player. He's a guy that tight can take at any point in practice. And if someone needs to come out for a rep, he just throws him in that position. doesn't matter which one it is. He knows everything on the field. He's very aware of what's going on around him. He understands what his strengths are. He understands what he has to improve on as a rookie. I think Jason's done a really good job incorporating him in the game plan. But this guy's earned everything he's gotten so far, and he keeps coming to work every day and, and giving us reasons to put him on the field. Just curious, you guys waived Corey Ballantyne yesterday. Just was wondering what went into that decision and, and why, in your estimation, that it's been kind of a struggle to get consistent cornerback play on the other side opposite of Bradbury? Uh, look, obviously that's a challenging position. I see a lot of improvement from the guys on our roster. Uh, we've gotten a lot of improved play throughout the season. We had some things early on in the season we had to clean up and correct, and I think that's improved as we've gone. That being said, you're going to keep seeing top players across the ball from you every week. Uh, you know, it's the National Football League. There's always going to be good skill players to run routes and work to get open and good quarterbacks who are going to throw them open at times. So we've got to keep improving at all positions in the defensive backfield, but I see those strides every week, um, specifically to Corey. Um, we like Corey a lot. You know, uh, we have a list of roster moves we have to make throughout the season. Uh, we did what we thought was best for the team.